If you consider the treasures that are within your heart, whatever is in your heart will eventually overflow from your heart. We need to make sure that our hearts are filled with the right things, the treasures of God. I want to talk about that today. Out of the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45, reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Let's go to the Word. A good person produces good things from the treasure of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. New Living Translation, Luke 6 and 45. Grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever and ever and ever. Talking today about inner treasures, the overflow of the heart. Jesus gives us this profound teaching about the connection between a person's heart and their actions. Here he explains that a person's words and deeds are direct reflections of what is residing on the inside, deep within a person's heart. A person filled with righteousness and goodness will produce good actions, will naturally have good actions and speak words that uplift while a person who is evil, harboring negative thoughts and sin will produce harmful actions and words. So this verse underscores for us the importance of guarding and protecting our hearts and making sure that we fill our hearts with the things that are of God, simply because the conditions of the heart ultimately determine and dictate how we will live and interact with other people. Our words reveal the true state of our inner being and making it an essential part of our true nature. A loving heart will reflect through our Christ-like character. And so Luke 6 and 45 challenges us to reflect on what is deep within us, allowing us to recognize that the fruit that we bear simply comes from what we are placing into our hearts and into our minds. So we must recognize the, the words that we are saying, the words that we speak, the actions that we undertake, all of them are connected. And so here Jesus is emphasizing, emphasizing unto us that our speech is not merely superficial, but it flows from the core of who we are. If we fill our hearts with love, faith, kindness, truth, and all of these virtues will eventually manifest in our actions and in our deeds. If our hearts, conversely, are filled with bitterness, anger, deceit, then these will be the things that will stem from our heart and our speech will be controlled by that and our behavior will be led by that. So here's a few things that we can, we can consider. First of all, we must consider the source of our actions. What, what's driving our actions? Are we intentional about what we are allowing to shape our hearts? Are we intentional about what we're allowing to shape our lives? Are we intentional about what we're putting into our inner man? Whether it is through our daily thoughts, our relationships, our spiritual disciplines, we must be vigilant in filling our hearts with warm uh, thoughts, with pleasant uh, pleasantries with scriptures, positive words. We must align, align ourselves with God's will, God's word, and God's plans. We must also make sure that we protect our hearts. That's the second thing. We must guard the heart. Proverbs 4 and 23 reminds us to guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. What we focus on, what we meditate on, and what we allow to consume us, influences our lives. It is the things that we store up in our heart. These are the things that will dictate how we will live life and how life will, how our lives will be, will play out. The purity of the heart comes from consistent communion with God and fellowship with God. And this is done through prayer, through studying the word, meditating on the word, fasting, and as well having time alone with God applying his principles in our lives on a daily basis. And then thirdly, talks about the power of words. Our words carry power. 
They carry power to build up or to tear down, to bless or to curse. They reflect the character of our heart. And as well, they have lasting impact upon our lives. And so we must therefore tame our tongues, speak life, encourage others with truth. Must be a priority. We must make sure that we're speaking life and not death and that we are encouraging people through and by the word of God. And so these verses are a reminder for us to understand the role that God is attempting to take in our lives and the power that the word of God has on us. We are influenced by the word. We are directed by the word. Our spirit is fed by the word of God. And so we're encouraged to make sure that we regularly assist our own minds and hearts by allowing ourselves to focus on the will of God, of the will of God, the plan of God, the purposes of God. And as well, that we allow God to cleanse and to renew us from the inside, that our thoughts, our minds, our hearts seek God, allowing his love, his righteousness to overflow within us in every aspect of our lives. And as we go spiritually, we will become conduits of grace, mercy, love, peace, and our world will become a better place. And so this verse teaches us that the heart is a wellspring. It is a wellspring of our lives. And when we speak, it is a reflection of the love that is within us. It is a reflection of the grace and the mercy of God. And so we must recognize that the heart is a treasury and we must protect it as a treasury. We must as well uh, invest in it as a treasury. We must also recognize that it has the power to bless us. And so we must cultivate it, a healthy heart. And uh, we must make as we must make sure as well that that comes from self-examination, that comes from prayer, that comes from studying scripture and recognizing that words have a ripple effect. And sometimes our words can be cutting, our words can be can be can be difficult, our words can be harsh, our words can be overwhelming. So we must make sure that we're extending grace and mercy in the lives of other people. And so here's our application, our takeaway today. First of all, we must make sure that we do a daily check of our heart. If just as we maintain our physical health, we must also do our, maintain our spiritual health. We do we maintain our physical health by checking our vitals. That's how we can tell that there's something going on within us that needs attention. The same thing with our spiritual health. We must ask and check to make sure that our, our heart is focused on God, that we're that we are focused on our emotions, our thoughts, and our desires, and what we're storing up within us, and make sure that our focus is on things above and not beneath. We must fill our, our lives with God's Word. Our hearts need to be saturated with the Word of God. The Word of God is a powerful source of life and will fill your heart um, with joy when we fill ourselves with the Word of God. It will influence our actions. It will help us to direct our decision making it will uh, it will direct our steps it will direct our lives in every way so we must make sure that we are meditating on the word of god so that we can direct our lives and then the last thing is that we must be like make it a daily practice to encourage to build up to pour into other people make it a daily practice to uh be a blessing unto others and to uplift others, whether they are in conversation with us, whether they are family, friends, colleagues, or just strangers. Intentionally, let your words breed life and as well. Let your words um, shine with the glory of God. Let, God. let God be seen in your words, your actions, and your deeds. In conclusion today, Luke 6 and 45 is a call to being aware, self-aware of our spiritual integrity, self-aware of uh, our lives and the words that we that we say. It reminds us that the heart is not naturally um, going to be uh, going to be focused on the right things. That we must nurture it. We must place within it what is right. We must actively pursue righteousness and allow ourselves to focus on the will and the plan of God. We must be intentional about our efforts to cultivate our hearts 
knowing that it will shape our world, our actions, and our relationships. We must allow God to transform our hearts, to place within us a clean heart, to make us a vessel of his goodness, that our lives may naturally bear the fruits of the Spirit according to the plan of the Almighty God. Thank God for this word today. I pray that it blesses you as it is a blessing unto me. Let's pray. God, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your amazing grace. You're a great God, and you're greatly to be praised, and we're thankful that we know you. We pray that you'll create within us a clean heart, renew within us the right spirit. We pray that you would continue to direct us, instruct us, lead us, guide us in every way, that you will pour your spirit within us, and that our hearts will be made new, that our hearts will be transformed, that we will be filled with love for our fellow man. Help us to love today. In fact, help that love to be seen in everything that we say and do. Take control of our lives and pray that you will lead us, guide us, and direct us. We come today praying for a great day. As we conclude this work, we, we pray blessings upon our every endeavor. We pray that as we start the day and go forth throughout the day, that you'll order our steps, direct our lives, and that you would, you would uh, immensely bless us abundantly provide for us and that you would give us strength and courage that you would touch our health our minds and as well that you would touch our spirits that we would be in tune with thee in all things we need your help and we're seeking your divine power i want to thank you for the wonderful things that you're doing the blessings that you're providing the answers that you're giving and the the great things that you're doing in our lives i praise you and magnify you because you continue to prove yourself you continue to demonstrate that you're very much in control. Please hear an answer. My prayer. We come today praying for um, our elected and appointed officials, praying for educators and administrators and teachers, praying for those in authority, those who have rule over us, that they will be led by you, praying for peace in the land, peace in our world, praying for healing and for deliverance, praying for those that are on our prayer list who we pray for every situation knowing that you're a healer i want to thank you for a great report from lisa pray that you'll continue to bless lisa continue to bless terry continue to watch over jane but thank you for what you're doing I ask that you'll continue to bless ken as well I pray that when lisa returns again that she'll get another glowing report that you will handle every situation thank you for your grace and mercy we continue to pray for betty sims lifting up stan and renee praying blessings upon mrs sims and continued favor Lifting up Cheryl Grant, praying for Relina's son, asking for healing and deliverance, praying for Shirley Rosen, continued blessings for Shirley and Marvin, praying for uh, Kathy Burks, and pray God that your will will be performed, that you'll continue to bless her, but that you would ultimately let your will be done. We trust and believe in your ability and in your power. Please hear and answer our prayer. We come today praying for all of those that are on our prayer list, knowing that the list may be long, but we have not exhausted your ability, nor your power. You're still able to do all things well. We trust and believe that today. We stand up on that today. We pray for families, and we pray for family relationships and structures. We pray, dear God, that you would continue to bless. I pray for the Garrett family, and I want to thank you for what you're doing, for the change that you're making, for the impact that you're having. I Behind the scenes, believe that you're doing some great things on their behalf. I pray that you'll continue to bless them, continue to work, and continue to move in the lives of this family. Thank you for a mother's love and a mother's request. I pray, God, that you would honor her request and bless in the name of Jesus the Christ. Lifting up Shannon today, praying for peace for Shannon. Lifting up her entire family and praying that you will bless her and as well that you would give her the desires of her heart. God, please hear and answer my prayer. Praise well to God that you'll make our world a better place, a loving place, a kind place. Allow us to find and, and let, allow us to find and connect with people who will pour into us, but as well people that we can pour into, people who will bless us, and as well those that we can be a blessing to. God, I pray that you would help us to guard our hearts, our minds, and our emotions, that we can focus on your will and your plan. Please, God, hear my prayer. Bless this day and bless us for the day. If you do these things, we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor both now and forever. 
and evermore. It is in the matchless name of Jesus our Christ. We ask these blessings, and I thank you because I do believe you've heard me. I do believe you're going to answer. It's in the precious name of Jesus the Christ we ask these blessings. And I tell you, thank you, because I believe you've heard me. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. Blessings to you today, Pastor Irvin and Barrett. Thank God for this day and this week. Been a busy week, but thank God that um, it is as well as it is. I pray that you have a fantastic day and that God blesses you. This is Time with God, morning prayer and devotion. I'm Pastor Irvin and Barrett, and I pray that this time has been encouraging to you. Pray for our effort, our work, the time that we share together. I pray that this time, this opportunity to share uh, that it is enlightening and encouraging to you, that it's a good start to your day or a good opportunity for you throughout the day to uh, be refreshed by the word of God. Be blessed as you go forth today. May the Lord grant you favor in all that you're saying do. May he give you peace and as well guard and protect your hearts in all things. Please know nothing's going to happen to you today that God has not equipped you and prepared you to handle. He's given you every tool and every resource that you need for success and favor. So trust God, believe God, have faith in God. Know that God has everything under control. Have an amazing day. God be with you is my prayer. Last thing, a candle does not lose anything by lighting another candle. They both continue to shine. Make that your life's mission to pour into someone else and to light them, light their life. It takes nothing away from you. Have a great day. God be with you is my prayer. Be blessed.